There's also all kinds of controversy and or discussion uh, continuing on who this devil is going to be. And we talked about it a little on a previous show, but there, now uh, uh, I don't know why anybody cares at this point. I think the devil, when he, whoever it is, when he's revealed, is going to want the fans are going to want to run him out of town. Well, like you said, a lot of questions have been asked. And we just did a segment recently about who the potential devil in AEW could be. And since that time, more people have been, I guess, tagged as options to be the devil. Possible surrogates for the devil? I'm not sure. <laughs> but I have some other names here, Jim, that have compiled from suggestions that the Cult of Cornetto sent in or just tweeted out. The amateur detectives, the Columbos out there, the Clouseaus. Let me go with a few of them here. Let's start with someone that has been reported he's been backstage at several recent Dynamites, Kyle O'Reilly. I, I love Kyle O'Reilly. I've always had nothing but good things to say about him. But no, this is not the spot for him because that's so, that's such a deep cut. That the, the idea that everybody would instantly go, oh my God, Kyle O'Reilly, because he was friends with Adam Cole and Adam Cole came in between MJF and about, what the fuck? And Kyle's been out for over a year with his neck issues, and he was not pushed in a main event singles world title contention spot to begin with. And and it's just they're grasping at anybody that has ever been personally associated with, you know, with the, the prominent players in this in any promotion, which... I don't blame everybody for doing that because Tony Khan will pull some shit that nobody except the goddamn most diehard dedicated fan of indie wrestling would ever know in a million years and expect it to be common knowledge. But I can't see anybody. I can't see MJF going along with that because this is going to affect him uh, more than anybody. And again, that would be Kyle O'Reilly's return to TV to be unmasked as the devil. I don't know if that would work or not, but. Another name people are looking at, or maybe one of various names, with all the talk of the Young Bucks being rebranded as <laughs> Super Dick Heels, Killing the Business Heels, with the confrontation with Adam Page. I don't know if you need to rebrand them what they've been before to be <laughs> yes, a Killing the Business so. Heels. That may be true. With the confrontation with Adam Page on Dynamite, what about a member of the Elite? And now you have MJF, the world champion, being attacked by the elite and all elite well but who's it ain't going to be either one of the buckaroos because they don't work as a single neither one of them works as a single they don't to me they don't work as a tag team but the whole thing doesn't work with either one of them as a single mjf should wipe his ass with either one of them singly if it was hangnail if he's still in the elite then we've already we're, we've seen that and we're seeing him bicker anyway if it was Harpo, good old Kenny, he's not that smart. And he's not that that cool. And his voice doesn't fit the devil. It fits fucking, you know, Aunt Clara on Bewitched. Oh. So, it, no, who else is in the elite? I mean, everybody's Brandon in either Cutler. the elite or the... Brandon Cutlet. There Cole you Cabana. go. Boy. Cole Cabana, that would, hey, he could come out and say, I was responsible for putting an end to this company financially, and now I'm going to put an end to your title reign. I've seen a lot of people show up with their moms. How many of them share their bank accounts with their moms? Yeah. No, there's nobody in the elite that would make any sense for this whatsoever. It, 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 I mean, you can go through more names, but I think it's going to end up being some fucking yahoo that all the really smart Adderall taking fans think is just the coolest thing in the world. And that every normal person watching television go, go, who the fuck is this guy? But go ahead. Talk about wacky ideas. What if MJF has an evil twin? An evil twin. Uh -huh. Yeah. I don't think we, I don't think we can do the Samantha and Serena thing from bewitched either. All right, you're shooting down the evil twin idea. Uh -uh. What about someone who could suck the energy out of any room? Chris Jericho. Uh, yeah, I'd, uh, I mean, it, it could vary. They could make it Jericho. It, it ain't going to get over anyway, pretty much no matter who it is, because we've kind of established that there's nobody for it to be that will be a 
game changer, business changer, or a big exciting reveal. If Jericho wanted to be that, he did the bat. He's got the black bat, but so does Sting. Sting's retiring. And besides, he wouldn't even be a heel when he was a heel. So Jericho, the only reason it would be him is if he talks Tony into it to keep himself in the spotlight. And, and Jericho and MJF do have the checkered past. But, you know, and, and again, I'm not saying, I've said on the previous time we discussed it, Wardlow makes sense, and it was Wardlow at least in the ring the last time they were holding him down. You saw those pictures of the boots have been going the around. The boots, yeah. Not only did he did Wardlow have mask hair, but also he had the exact same boots on when he came out to have his match as the guy did that was holding the bat. So, But that just means that they said, hey, Wardlow, put this outfit on. It doesn't have to be him, but it would probably make more sense. I have seen other fans guess that maybe Dax Harwood was one of the masked figures because <laughs> they thought they saw the outline of a mustache in the mask and a bald head. Again, going with the various options, Wardlow, Dax, what if it's the pinnacle? What if it's Sean Spears and FTR and Wardlow and maybe even old Tully getting back together to get revenge on MJF? And, uh, well, there's only four, so that would take into account Wardlow, both of FTR and Sean Spears, who I'm sure is still around. We just never see him. With Tully as the masked figure, right? No, because there's... Well, there was four of them in the ring, including the leader guy the other day. There was three holding him and the guy with the oh, bat. Oh, that's right, that's right. And then there was four guys that surrounded the ring, uh, but it, it wasn't clear that any one of them was the particular devil. Point is, we're trying to put logic in this, and it's going to make no sense. We're going to be able to pick holes in this thing like a fucking block of Swiss cheese when it's revealed. But Wardlow was the guy playing the playing the part, and I wouldn't be surprised if Dax wasn't one of the other guys. They're not like bringing different people in that they've got to pay just to put these outfits on. It's some of the boys from the locker room. That's why they're all covered up from head to toe. But the, does that mean that any of them are going to be actually in this group? Probably not. A faction of people who hate MJF, would that work? Just a group of people who wouldn't normally get along who get together because they want to stop MJF. Well, at this point, I'm fixing to join them. They've taken my favorite fucking wrestler and I don't even look forward to it anymore because it's just so stupid all the way he's being presented, the things they're having him do, the people he's surrounding himself with or that he's being surrounded with. You can't even look forward to it anymore. So I might join the group. Well, we shall see what happens, Jim, but a couple more names here. What about Shibata? <laughs> You know... He's not behaving like himself since his brain was returned to his head. He, I was about to say he has had a personality change. I think they wired it in backwards. I really did. I don't think it's Shibata. I don't think it's Shibata or Shapoopy. And finally... Shapoopy, Shapoopy, Shapoopy. And finally today, and we encourage anyone who wants to uh, hear the other picks, go to the video of part one of this. Swerve Strickland. Well... <sighs> The only thing I would say, the reason why that I think that it's not him is just because he's been involved in every fucking thing else. I don't know if he'd had time to change his clothes that quick. Why would you do that with Swerve when you pushed him in completely different directions and given him all this time in every other direction? Why, no, would, you I, do, that, why would you do any of this with any of these people? Well, I'd... Uh, good, good answer. So my, my hands are up in the air. All right, this has been the Devil's Choice segment here on the show, and we shall see who the devil will be revealed as. This is one of the biggest <laughs> mysteries in wrestling history. Who is the devil? Maybe Vince McMahon. What do you think? I don't think it's going to be Vince. I think, I think we're pretty good there. Shane McMahon. Now that might... No, come on. I, that's like when... <laughs> We remember when this whole thing first started and people were wondering, wow, what if Tony brings Shane in? Like he, like he's available to be brought in. Like, oh gosh, he made me an offer so I can't turn it down. And Shane would be working opposite his father's company. That was, people believe a lot of things, but I don't know whether anybody's believing this angle or not.
Maybe it's punk. What do you think? Is the devil punk? Or is punk the devil? A lot of people thought he was the devil. Imagine if punk really does go to NXT, and then he just, with NXT, beats AEW in the ratings. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's already kind of uh, started that, hadn't he? Because punk, this past Saturday night, after his rousing rendition of a promo on SmackDown, was on the NXT, it's not a pay-per-view because it's not on pay-per-view, but they have it on the cock, the peacock, uh, the premium live event or whatever. He was on that from Bridgeport, Connecticut, opposite collision from AEW, the show that was specifically built around Punk at the start because Tony's other employees weren't men enough to fucking be able to work with the guy so they banished him to a saturday night tv show that would have uh, all kinds of opposition programming against it to begin with and he still was able to carry off the best wrestling matches and or on the program have the best wrestling matches if he wasn't involved in them with ftr to bullet club that we've seen on television in a long time and they ran him off, and now he is opposite that program that is tanked in the ratings, and he's working for the biggest company in the world and taking viewers away from the program that Tony designed to be built around him. There is some level of ironicosity going on around here, isn't there? It sure seems like it, and Again, this has not been a good period for AEW because of things they've done, and now just people who used to work there who are doing better things elsewhere. 